So I'm going to give you kind of a pretty informal introduction on the Bailey. Uh, it's like the mini slab roller. It's the 22 inch version. It's a tabletop slab roller. I believe it costs about 400 bucks. I think I got mine from... I'll go over some of the parts and little things I kind of modified here and there that I thought was kind of helpful. And uh, yeah, then just go show you like a general use and different things you can kind of use with it to roll clay through and a uh, few tips and things that I've learned so far about it and things I've read and little things I created for it. So in my studio space here, which is not very big, it's like a 9 by 12 space, I've got a lot of shelves that I put up in here, so I put it in a relatively tight space. So what that means for if you got to do that is like figure out like how much clearance you're gonna need in here I think this is about four or six inches like the slab roller can only roll I think uh, max is like a seven eighths inch slab that's without any of these uh, masonite boards in there uh, but don't get it too close because you know you are gonna need to remove these boards and the way that I do that for mine is I slide them out the side here just be careful of this lip here like this can bend if you put enough force on it so just be easy lifting these out if you have no space to move them like out this way um, and uh, yeah one other thing that I modified for my slab roller is it's really important to not damage this part of the roller and the bottom one too so one thing that I went and bought was there's like a insulation pipe that you can get. I believe this is ooh, it's not the small one. It's like shit. Which one is it? It might be the two inch one. I can't remember. But uh, it's perfect fit for this. This is the tinier one. I use this for tools and stuff for hand tools. But this fits around this perfectly and it keeps it protected on top. So if anything falls on top of this. This will cushion the fall and it won't mark up your roller because you don't want to get any cuts or anything in here because that could potentially, you know, I guess if you're going to use canvas or something, it might not cause any damage, but you never know like what might show up in your work when you roll clay through here. Um, so that was helpful. Another thing that I did was I put a little bit of uh, special, uh, this is actually a UV tape, which it's really I just use it because of the brightness. You can put any color in here. It, you can put red tape on the end of this, but that's just so that I, like nobody bumps it and I kind of see it. It just makes it a little bit more visual to the eye. Uh, something else I did is I added like a few stickers and things here just for fun, for decoration. Uh, but I put on here the direction the in, for the intended use of the slab roller, just so I remember. And it's just something that, like if other people are down here, they'll also know how to use it. So I mark the direction that I want the, slot, the slab to travel when I'm using this thing. So I'll be primarily just using it this way, and a uh, slab will enter here and will exit here on this side. Alright, so one thing they mention in the user manual for this thing is that you can use a few different types of materials or tools for rolling your slab through. I particularly like these slab mats by Stoneleaf Pottery. I believe I also got these from the ceramic shop. Or actually, no, these two are from Sheffield Pottery, out of Western Mass. Uh, I know ceramic shop has some. I believe Sheffield might still have some on their website. But these are, yeah, these are 16 by 22s. The side that you use them is the side with the logo, from what I understand, because the other side has like a, a slightly papery, pulpy like finish to it. It's a little fuzzy. So I'm like pretty sure you use them on the side of the logos, so the way to do that is just to have them face each other. And these these are really cool, they don't put a whole lot of texture in your clay, which is nice. Uh, you just don't want to leave clay on them for too long because they can get wavy. But these things are awesome. I also have like, if I need to roll really large slabs, I've got like, the hell are these? I think 22 by 50 
sheets, which they also make. I believe those are about 50 bucks or 40 bucks each. I have like two sets of those for two different color clays, like if I use white clay or red clay. Those will fit in here perfectly. They'll actually lay the full length. But what I haven't done yet is I haven't rolled a large enough slab, so I'm actually not sure. I believe the whole thing is going to move, which like <laughs> could be a little bit of a problem here because it's it's really long, like it's 50 inches long and like the space I have to my door is a little bit tight there, but I could probably open the door and pull this thing back a little bit so that I could fit the whole 50 inches out. Or the other option is to just cut those sheets in half and then uh, use them smaller because I don't know that I'd ever need to roll a slab bigger than even this right here and you know this space is pretty nice and generous here it's about 22 or so inches as well uh, as well as the depth here um, so that's really cool these things are awesome I've got it set to uh, I mark these boards I put a quarter and then an eighth on the one below it and what I've been doing to figure out the exact kind of depth is use a set of digital calipers I'll post the measurements at the end in a little chart just so you get an idea of like you know what what different like uh, thicknesses you can get with these slabs but what I'm doing is I'm rolling a slab and using the end of this uh, caliper or is it this part down here and I stick it in the clay and I kind of just measure how uh, how thick the slab is it will give me a reading here so I'm just going to convert the millimeters to inches and I'll probably post the uh, millimeters measurement too for anyone who does metrics so yeah, that's kind of just a fun little project I'm doing with it, just so I kind of have more of an, an idea. You can fit other uh, boards in here, you just have to cut them yourself. Uh, who is it? Lowe's and Home Depot, they have like their own, uh, these same measurements, a quarter inch, and uh, I, believe, I believe they have, it might even be an eighth inch and three sixteenths, which is just, what is that, like slightly just made a little chart here. I'm kind of a visual person. Let's see, 316. So it's just under a quarter inch. That's the thicker one they have there in the stores. And you can cut those down if you got a circular saw or a table saw. And you can kind of make it even more custom to uh, the different slab thicknesses. Or you can put like uh, a piece of wood in there. Like there's tons of different things you can put in here to kind of get the, the proper shape slab that you're looking for and the proper thickness. Um, but yeah, these things are great. I highly recommend these for use with the slab roller. They're just really cool. Alright, and now I'm just going to roll a quick slab for you. So one thing that's important with this is you want to have the end of your slab like at a... the way they describe it in the instructions is have it like the head of an axe, like the blade of an axe. So you have it just like slightly tapered. You don't want to just like throw your clay in the, on here and just like, you know, hardly pat it down and then just try and send it through like it's not going to grab. It could mess up your paper and your slab will just come out really bad. So you want to make it relatively easy to go under here. So you do that by making it slightly tapered here so that it has like ease traveling through these rollers. And what I noticed after using it for a few times now is that the this is like a, a slightly rubber texture. And I, I think it's like some kind of hard, like, I'm not really sure, some kind of hard rubber, but you can, can, can damage it for sure. But it works by grabbing the underside texture of these boards, because these boards have like a certain amount of like texture to the back of them. They're not like the smooth finished type boards. They have like an unfinished feel to them, and that's what the rollers grab and pull into the slab roller. So both of them have it. You can kind of see it in that picture, uh, this image here. So that's kind of what grabs on here and then ends up pulling everything through. So I've got this loaded here. I actually have already oriented my slab. Originally I had it this way and I'm going to turn it this way because I'm changing the thickness. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to slightly give it a little bit of lead. I'm going to try and do this one handed if I can. Let's see. I'm feed it a little bit through there. Then I push the boards up. In the back here so that they touch the roller that's pretty important otherwise it's not going to travel through there right this thing kind of works on friction and uh, gripping it and bring it through so now let's see if I can do it without a hand I don't know if I can we'll see so now I'm just gonna send it through uh, it's not grabbing that's all right I think I just need to push it a little bit. Ah, this is tough to do one-handed 
So I'm going to push back here with this hand at the same time I'm turning the wheel. And then one thing they said that's important, here we go, is you don't want to stop when you're turning this. You want to keep it moving because according to them it can leave like a texture, or not texture, a, uh, a slight divot in your slab. So as you're rolling it, just keep it going at a smooth pace. There we go. And we're all done. And there we go. It's finished. And then I'll peel this off. Then I've got a slightly different height that I'm going to check with my calipers. So that's kind of it. That's the uh, how to use this thing. Let me see. Oh yeah, another little, little thing I made. This is just to uh, keep the roller from dangling. I just put like a little piece of wood here. And that kind of keeps this up in the air. You can do it on the other side too. But I don't know, it just keeps it out of the way for certain things. Like if I'm wheeling things around in here, or a chair or whatever. It kind of just keeps it elevated. And I don't know, it might give the, uh, the arm a little bit of a break while being supported by this piece of wood. So that's kind of useful. And there's enough space under there for, uh, for wood to sit. And uh, yeah, this is just kind of like a reclaim table I built. And uh, under here is just clay storage, and that's a dolly I got, I think at Ocean State Job Lot. And uh, that's kind of it. That's that's the uh, Bailey Slab Roller. Anyone has any questions or anything, let me give me a shout in comments or something. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have about it. Uh, this thing is awesome. I love this thing. It's perfect size. It's very good price. I don't know if they make a version of it with the legs. I think they do have it for the 16 inch. I think there's like a 16 inch version of this. But this is the 22 or so. Um, so this one's really cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Very, uh, pretty straightforward to use.